Scientists have been trying to crack the code on what makes a face attractive for years. But it seems like most of the research on this topic focuses on female faces. Why? Well, maybe there is a bigger interest and market behind female looks, but that might not be the case for that much longer, since teenage boys seem to have a newfound obsession on getting the perfect jawline, hunter eyes, and mogging each other. And looks maxing has been going mainstream in these last couple of years. But don't worry, there's still a ton of data on what makes a man handsome, attractive, or whatever word you want to use. But the crazy part about this data is that when it comes to the female faces, there are some clear patterns. Certain features and looks are consistently rated as more attractive, which I also made a video on if you want to check that out. But this video is for the guys. And when it comes to the male faces, there's a whole different story. What makes a man's face universally appealing is actually still kind of a mystery. The science is all over the place. And before going further into that mystery of male attractiveness, let's first dive into what we do know. So, scientists have managed to nail down a few key factors on what makes a face attractive. That is averageness, basically how typical your features are, good proportions, strong facial development, or what the pros call facial robusticity, and of course, symmetry. Sounds simple enough, right? But here's the interesting part. A big part of studying facial attractiveness comes down to how masculine or feminine someone's features are. This can also be described as how sexually dimorphic a person's face is. For example, with female faces, it's pretty straightforward. More feminine traits are generally considered more attractive. But when we switch to the male faces, things get a lot murkier. Like I said previously, the science on this is all over the board. Some studies focus on masculine features, things like a strong jawline or a prominent brow ridge, and show that these are linked to dominance, which can sometimes boost attractiveness. The weird part is that other studies show the exact opposite, with softer, more feminine traits like a less pronounced jaw, or just lower dominance traits in general, are also linked to increased attractiveness in men. So the connection between masculinity and male facial attractiveness, yeah, it's not as clear cut as you might think. So why could this possibly be? At first, who's doing the rating actually matters. Younger women often prefer softer, younger looking men, while older women are generally drawn to more masculine features. But don't confuse masculinity with age. You can still be young and have a very masculine face. But this might explain to some extent why studies on male attractiveness and dimorphism are so contradictory. There could be a big difference between older and younger women as raters. And it gets even more intriguing. Actually, on a personal level, women's preferences can shift as well. This is due to their biology. During low fertility phases, softer, more feminine faces in men tend to win out, possibly due to being linked to caregiving and stability. But in high fertility phases, it's all about these strong masculine features that's associated with good genes. At least according to the ovulatory shift hypothesis that has been a debated topic in evolutionary psychology for many years now. And even hormonal birth control throws another twist into the mix as well, as women on the pill often prefer less masculine male faces. But anyway, since the science is contradicting, we need to do something else to find out what's ideal. Maybe you've heard the saying, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. By that standard, perfect would be to have some masculinity but also some softer features to even it out. And, not surprisingly, that seems about right if we look at the real world with real world examples. Too much masculine features look ogre-ish, and too little is obviously not good either. So let's move on to the more specific features that makes the face aesthetic. The two major things are the eye area and jaw. The appearance of the eye area comes down to a mix of factors. First we have the skull, with the brow ridge, the cheekbones, and maxilla. They all play key roles. These bones shape how your eyes sit and are believed by some to be influenced by growth habits like mewing, which may push the maxilla forward over time. But how much mewing truly affects this is still very debated. Anyways, forward and upward facial growth creates horizontally wide vertically narrow eyes, which are often seen as attractive. And soft tissue also matters. Fat under the brow bone decreases with age, often leading to a more hollow or saggy look. And features like cantle tilt, which is whether your eyes angle up or down, also influence this perception. 
so a slight positive tilt is generally preferred, but there's also plenty of attractive people with a neutral or even a little bit negative tilt. And this proves that these might be preferred in many cases, but there's so much individuality in the face, so none of this is a necessity to be good looking or have a good eye area. We can look at Cillian Murphy for example. His eyes does not fit the criteria of anything that I just covered, but he's seen as one of the most attractive men of this time. When it comes to the jaw, what's generally perceived as masculine is having a long ramus, a prominent chin and a good jaw angle. The studies suggest that both men and women find wide angular jaws more attractive, as they are often associated with masculinity, dominance and strong development. The jaw angle plays a crucial role, with research indicating that an ideal angle for men lies between 110 and 130 degrees. This balance enhances the harmony between the upper and lower face. Prominent chins also contribute to attractiveness and dominance, likely influenced by testosterone's role in forward chin development. A sharp jawline paired with a well-defined yet proportionate chin adds to the masculine aesthetic, striking a balance that's both strong and appealing. So if you have these traits together with good harmony and ratios, you probably fit into this aesthetic ideal. Harmony is the next crucial part of beauty and attractiveness. This is different from the measurable scientific kind. It is about how things like symmetry, proportions and balance work together and is shaped by thousands of years of evolution. So while science can point out patterns, true beauty is more something that you feel instantly. Your gut reaction tells you if someone is attractive. You don't need no numbers or formulas to know this, and harmony is what makes it all click. And no analysis can fully explain it. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? The thing that you can measure that is fairly close is the ratios of the face or another thing that's more universal that is generally linked to good harmony is averageness. Averageness is how closely your face resembles a mixture of all faces in a given population. So it's all about how closely your face mirrors a blend of features from the people around you. You can think of it as nature's way of saying that you fit right in. So basically and quite interestingly having an average face in terms of features is something that the scientific literature has shown is a very positive indicator of attractiveness. And not only that, average faces are generally more symmetrical and symmetry is typically attractive in all faces. When averageness and symmetry were independently manipulated, one study found that both manipulations positively influenced attractiveness judgments independently of each other. However, it is also important to say that the prettiest faces usually have one or two distinct traits, meaning that this preference for average faces is not absolute. Another thing that is widely considered attractive is facial leanness. Studies consistently show that people with lower facial fat, or what scientists call facial adiposity, are rated as more attractive and healthier than those with higher levels. Interestingly, a study by Fu et al. from 2017 found that facial adiposity was a better predictor of male attractiveness than traits like averageness, masculinity and even symmetry. And not only that, face fat was also the strongest indicator of perceived health in male faces. A lean face shows the underlying bone structure more and therefore adds to the perception of an aesthetic face. And this is quite obvious. For example, if you are lean, your ramus and your jawline will show much more, which is one of the more prominent features that adds to a masculine look. But obviously it's all about balance. If someone's face is too lean with barely any fat, it makes them less attractive as the studies show. So as expected, extremes don't win and moderation is key. The last thing that I want to cover that makes you more beautiful and attractive is your own facial uniqueness. Because what makes a face truly captivating is the charm, those tiny unique imperfections that enhance attractiveness. And universal emotions like happiness or sadness are shared by all, but how we express them is uniquely ours. Facial muscles and bone structure creates a personal canvas where a smile might highlight one person's cheekbones and make another person's eyes light up. So don't be afraid to show genuine emotions with your face. Research shows that expressions don't just enhance attractiveness, they shape how others see us, influencing perceptions of trustworthiness, confidence and even dominance. So to summarize, what is ideal for men is not as straightforward as it is with women. 
Having a masculine facial structure with a prominent jaw and brow ridge gives a masthetic look and is also positive for attractiveness as long as it is not too exaggerated. Also, being high in averageness is generally good, and factors that's hard to measure such as harmony also plays a huge role, as well as your own facial individuality. But that was it for this video, thanks for watching and bye!